Welcome to Create You Homeschooling. I am very happy that you wish to teach chess to your children. Learning chess is very important, especially for the kids. It has numerous benefits. It improves memory power, strategical thinking, and even exercises both sides of the brain. Playing chess also increases creativity, concentration, and IQ levels. And what's more, it pumps up the brain power, teaches planning and foresight too. And here is the best part of all: all these benefits will come naturally. As chess is not an academic subject, chess teaching necessitates your presence. As a parent, sit next to your child and play together. As I previously stated, all the videos will be very short. And in each video, I will encourage you to solve a challenge with your child together. You only need to spend a few minutes per challenge. Okay. For this chess course, you will need to gather a couple of things. This is why I made this preparatory video to walk you through everything you need. The first item you will need is a chess board. As you know, ours is a mini 4x4 board rather than a standard 8x8 board. You can create your own 4x4 board in a couple of ways and I will show you how. The first way is to cover a portion of a standard chess board. You can cover it with a thick paper or a cardboard sheet like this. First, cut a cardboard sheet to the precise size of your chessboard. Then, cut a square, the size of which should equal a 4x4 board. Now, you can place this cardboard sheet on a chessboard. Then, you can teach them on the visible 4x4 board. Here is a second way. This might be easier. I have provided you a free printable for the 4x4 chess board in the description box. You can print it on a normal A4 sheet and laminate it as I did here. And the other thing you need is of course the chess pieces. That's all. We are ready to go. Thank you all for your interest in our codes. I'm delighted to have you all on board. We will learn the names of the chess pieces. In this game, there are six different types of chess pieces. Now, let's discuss about them. king the king is the most significant piece despite being the most important piece the king is also one of the weakest in the game queen the queen is the most powerful and strongest piece in the game rook rooks are extremely strong if you have Two rooks against a queen you can still win the game. Bishop The bishop is a long range chess piece that can be surprisingly powerful if properly deployed. Knight The knight is an important chess piece because it is the only chess piece that can jump over other chess pieces. Pawn Pawns can represent frontline warriors. In my view, they are the most daring. Now, let's learn the names of all pieces again. What's the name of this piece? King. Can you tell me the name of this piece? Queen. Tell me the name of this piece. Bishop. How is this piece called? Knight. 
Look, what's this here? Rook. And what's this piece here? Pawn. If you want to practice more, I have provided a free printable in the description box. I recommend to print it and hang it on the wall in your child's room or living room. Let's learn about the chessboard numbering. Its column location is B and its row location is 1. So the box address is B1. Let's see another example. The column location of this box is A and the row location of this box is 2. So the address of this box is A2. Here is one more example. The column location of this box is B. And the row location of this box is 3. So the address of this box is B3. And one final example. The column location of this box is D and the row location of this box is 4. The address of this box is correct D4. Here is a picture showing the addresses of all the boxes on our chessboard. If you want to practice more, I have provided a free printable in the description box. I recommend to print it and hang it on the wall in your child's room or living room. We will be learning the moves of the pawn through 12 exciting challenges. And you can download all these challenges for free from the link provided in the description box. The pawn was originally called Epadati, which was Sanskrit word for foot soldier. There are 8 pawns for each player and they stand in the front line. As previously said, Pawns are the frontline warriors. 
swans only take short steps but the way they move adds structure strategic depth and a distinct purpose to a chess game swans usually move one square forward at a time a pawn is the only piece that can never move backward a pawn can only move forward with one exception it can move diagonally while capturing an opponent's piece the pawn captures by moving one square diagonally forward to the left or right so this is briefly about the moves of the pawn now let's see it practically in a challenge get your 4 by 4 chess board ready which you might already have in your hand if not please watch the preparatory video i have provided the link in the description box you can also download the free printable 4 by 4 board from the description box of that video okay now let's take two chess pieces one is black rook and a white pawn initially place the pawn in the box b1 i believe you all remember how to find the address of each box which we have discussed in our previous video as you all remember the address of each box consists of two values the column location and the row location of the box so now in this case the column location is b and the row location is 1 so the address of the box is b1 right you can check out the class 1 video again to get even more familiar about the finding a box address i have provided the link in the description box okay now place the rook in the box c3 now let's start the game as previously stated the pawn can move only one step forward so let's move the pawn from b1 to b2 correct the pawn now has two possibilities it can either move forward or diagonally to capture the rook in this step i would like to capture the rook so i will move diagonally to the box c3 now that i have captured the rook and there are no other pieces on the board this challenge is finished now let's do this challenge again together let's place the pawn in b1 and rook in c3 now you will solve the challenge The pawn moves one step forward. The pawn now has two options. It can move forward or diagonally. Which one will you choose? I would like to capture the rook. So, diagonally. Wow, super. You captured the rook and you finished the challenge. That's great. In the next video, we will do the second challenge
stay tuned we'll be doing in total 12 challenges for pawn by the end of these 12 challenges you will be able to master the moves of the pawn we are going to see the second challenge of pawn as we learned in the previous lecture you still remember how the pawn moves right okay let's revise it again quickly pawns normally move one square forward at a time a pawn is the only piece that can never move backward the pawn captures by moving one square diagonally forward to the left or right okay now let's get started with the second challenge let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge a pawn a knight and a bishop place the pawn in box a1 next place the knight in box b3 and the bishop in box c4 now we are ready let's start the game as you know the pawn can move only one step forward so let's move the pawn from a1 to a2 correct the pawn now has two options it can either move forward or diagonally to capture the knight in this step i would like to capture the knight therefore i will move diagonally to box b3 right now again the pawn has two options it can either move forward or diagonally to the right to capture the bishop correct in this turn i would like to capture the bishop therefore i will move the pawn diagonally to the box c4 now that i have captured the bishop and there are no other pieces on the board so this challenge is finished let's do this challenge again together now let's again place the pawn in box a1 the knight in box b3 and finally the bishop in box c4 Now you will solve the challenge. The pawn moves one step forward. The pawn now has two options. It can move forward or diagonally. Which one will you choose now? I would like to capture the knight. So, diagonally. Now again the pawn has two possibilities. This time also I would like to move diagonally as I would like to capture the bishop. Perfect. You did a great job. Stay tuned. We will do 10 more challenges for pawn. We will look at the third pawn challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A pawn, a rook, and a king. Place the pawn in box C1. Next, place the rook in box B3. And the king in box A4. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know, the pawn can move only one step forward. So, let's move the pawn from C1 to 
say to write the pawn now has two options it can either move forward or diagonally left to capture the rook in this step i would like to capture the rook therefore i will move diagonally to the box b3 correct now again the pawn now has two options it can either move forward or diagonally left to capture the king right in this turn i would like to capture the king therefore i will move the pawn diagonally to box a4 correct now that i have captured the king and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's do this challenge again together now let's again place the pawn in box c1 the rook in box b3 and finally the king in box a4 now you will solve the challenge the pawn moves one step forward the pawn now has three options it can move forward or diagonally to the left or right which one will you choose now i would like to capture the rook so diagonally to the left Now again the pawn has three possibilities. This time also I would like to move diagonally to the left as I would like to capture the king. Perfect. You did a great job. Stay tuned. Nine more interesting challenges left for pawn. Let's get started with our
Next, place the rook in box d4 and the king in box b1. Now we are ready. Let's start the
don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay Cause my messages are timeless So they'll put them on display Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty I have a sense of urgency A message for eternity For everyone internally I had some people burden me But now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with Now they looking nervously And I don't really care what you think of me respectfully You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better See, I will outwork you Turn you to an enemy Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need some therapy I got the motherfucking recipe I've been cooking up hits I'ma leave a legacy You'll be looking small when you stand it right next to me I'm 5'10", bitch, but I'm 10 feet Cause next to me I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way so you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make Cause I don't give a fuck what you say, yeah I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make Yeah I'ma do it my way Only one option. It can move diagonally to the right to capture the patient.
options. It can either move diagonally to the left to capture the rook or right to capture the bishop. In this case, I would like to capture the bishop. So, let's move the pawn from c2 to d3. Correct. Now, we still have four more pieces on the board. So, this challenge is also not finished.
we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the rook can move in a straight path in any direction now in this case we can capture the king in the very next step as it is on the straight path so let's move the rook from d3 to a3 correct to capture the king now that i have captured the king and there are no other chess pieces on the board so this challenge is finished let us now move on to our fourth rook challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a white rook and a black bishop place the white rook in box a1 and place the black bishop in box a2 now we are ready let's start the game as you may recall from our previous class the rook can move in a straight line in any direction now in this case we can capture the bishop correct in the very next step as it is on the straight path so let us move the rook from a1 to a2 in order to capture the bishop correct now that i have captured the bishop and there are no additional chess pieces on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our fifth challenge let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge a black pawn a white rook and a black queen place the black pawn in box b1 next place the black queen in box d3 and the white rook in box a1 now we are ready Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the rook can move in a straight path in any direction. Now, in this case, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on the straight path. So, let's move the rook from A one two, D one correct to capture the pawn. Now again, let's move the rook from D one two, D three correct in order to capture the queen. Now that I have captured the queen and. There are no additional chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let us now move on to our sixth rook challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight, a black rook, and a white rook. place the black knight in box c1 next place the black rook in box c3 and place the white rook in box a3 now we are ready let's start the game 
Now, I have one question. Can we move the rook from a3 to c1 to capture the knight? No, because as you know, the rook can move in a straight line in any direction. So, in this case, we can move the white rook from a3 to c3 to capture the black rook. Correct. So, let's move the white rook from a3 to c3 to capture the black rook. Next, we can capture the knight in the very next step. As it is on the right path. So, let us move the rook from C3 to C1. Correct. In order to capture the knight. Now that I have captured the knight. And there are no additional chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our seventh challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black king, a black pawn and a white rook. Place the white rook in box C4. Next, place the black king in box D2. Place the black pawn in box C2. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the rook can move in a straight path in any direction. Now, in this case, we can capture the pawn. In the very next step as it is on the right path. So, let's move the rook from C4 to C2. Correct. To capture the pawn. Next, we can capture the king. In the very next step as it is on the right path. So, let us move the rook from C2 to D2. Correct. In order to capture the king. Super. Now that I have captured the king and there are no additional chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let us now move on to our 8th rook challenge. Let's consider 3 chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight, a black rook and a white rook. Place the white rook in box D4. Next, place the black knight in box A1. And Place the black troop in box A4. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. Now I have one question. Can we move the white troop from D4 to A1 to capture the knight? No, because... As you know, the rook can only move in a straight line in any direction. So, in this case, we can move the white rook from D4 to A4 to capture the black rook. Correct. So, let's move the white rook from D4 to 
A4 to capture the black rook. Next, we can capture the knight. In the very next step, as it is on the stride path. So, let us move the rook from A4 to A1. Correct. In order to capture the knight. Super. Now that I have captured the knight and there are no additional chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Now move on to our ninth rook challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn, a black knight, a black king and a white rook. Place the black pawn in box D3. Next, place the black knight in box B4. Place the black king in box D1. And place the white rook in box A3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. Now, I have one question. Can we move the rook from A3 to B4 to capture the knight? No, because you know from our previous class, the rook can move in a straight line in any direction. So, in this case, we can move the white rook from A3 to D3 to capture the black pawn. Correct. So, let's move the white rook from A3 to D3 to capture the black pawn. Next, we can capture the king. In the very next step, as it is on the stride path. So, let us move the rook from D3 to D1 in order to capture the king. Now that I have captured the king and we still have two more chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is not finished. Let's get started with our 10th rook challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, a black bishop and a white rook. Place the black bishop in box D2. Next, place the black rook in box C1. And place the white rook in box D4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the rook can move in a Try pot in any direction. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop in the very next step as it is on the stride pot. So, let's move the rook from d4 to d2 in order to capture the bishop. Correct! Next, is it possible to capture the black rook by moving diagonally? No, because as you know already, the rook can only move in a straight line in any direction. As 
As a result, this challenge is impossible to complete because the rooks cannot move diagonally. So, this challenge is not finished. Let us now move on to our 11th rook challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black king, a black pawn and of course a white rook. Place the black pawn in box D4. Next, place the white rook in box A1. And place the black king in box B1. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. Now, I have one question. Can we move the rook from A1 to D4 to capture the pawn? No, as you know already from our previous class. The rook can move only in a stride path in any direction. So, in this case, we can move the white rook from A1 to D1, correct, to capture the black king. So, in this case, we can move the white rook from A1 to D1. To capture the black king. Correct. Next. We can capture the pawn. In the very next step. As it is on the stride path. So. Let us move the rook from D1 to D4 in order to capture the pawn. Correct. Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no additional chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our jewel challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black bishop and a white rook. Place the black queen in box A2. Next, place the black bishop in box C2 and place the white rook in box A4. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the rook can move in a stride path in any direction. Now in this case, we can capture the queen in the very next step as it is on the stride path. So, let's move the rook from A4 to A2 to capture the queen. Correct. Now, again let's move the rook from A2 to C2 to capture the Bishop. Correct. Now that I have captured the Bishop and there are no other chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. This is all about the moves of the rook. You can download all these challenges for free from our website gajabooks.com. I have provided the link in the description box.
in this class we will go through 20 exciting challenges for night the night has almost unchanged since chaturanga which is usually considered as the very earliest form of chess its original sanskrit name is aswa or ashwa which means horse The knight is a piece in the game of chess that is traditionally shaped like a horse. Knights represent the cavalry on the chessboard. The knight moves very differently compared to other chess pieces. And its movement is unchanged. since the piece was invented the knight is special for two reasons it is the only piece that has the ability to hop or leap over another piece with each movement it switches from a white square to a black square or vice versa that means knight winning on a white square will always end up on a black square as mentioned just before the knight moves unconditionally compared to other chess pieces whereas other chess pieces move in a straight line knights move in an l shape That means they can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically The knight is the only piece in the game of chess that can jump over other pieces regardless of whether those pieces are white or black this is briefly about the moves of the knight let's begin with our first challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black pawn and a white knight place the black pawn in box b1 next place the white knight in box a3 now we are ready let's start the game as you recall from our previous class the knight can move in an l shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically in this case We can capture the pawn since it is in the knight's range. That is two squares to the bottom followed by one square to the right. So, let's move the knight from a3 to b1 to capture the pawn. Correct. Now that we have captured the pawn and There are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our second challenge. Let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge. A black bishop and a white knight. 
place the black bishop in box b2 next place the white knight in box d3 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already the knight can move in an l shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically now in this case we can capture the bishop in the very next step as it is in the range of our knight which is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically correct so let's move the knight from d3 to b2 to capture the bishop correct now that we have captured the bishop and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our third challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black rook and a white knight place the black rook in box b4 next place the white knight in box c2 now we are ready let's start the game as you recall from our previous class the knight can move in an L shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically now in this case we can capture the rook correct since it is in the knight's range that is two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally so let's move the knight from c2 to b4 to capture the rook correct now that we have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finish let's get started with our fourth challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black queen and a white knight place the black queen in box c2 next place the white knight in box a1 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class knight can move in an l shape that means Knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically Now in this case we can capture the queen since it is in the knight's range that is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically so let's move the knight from a1 to c2 to capture the queen correct 
Now that we have captured the queen and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our fifth challenge. Let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn and a white knight. Place the black pawn in box A3. Next, place the white knight in box C2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you recall from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. Correct. That means, Knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally. Now, in this case, we can capture the pawn since it is in the range of our knight. That is, two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically very good so let's move the knight from c2 to a3 to capture the pawn very good now that we have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished Let's get started with our sixth challenge. Let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight and a white knight. Place the black knight in box C2. Next, place the white knight in box D4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already, the knight can move in an L shape. That means, knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally. Super! Now, in this case, we can capture the black knight. Correct. Since it is in the range of our white knight. That is, one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically. So, let's move the white knight from D4 to C2 to capture the Black Knight. Very good. Now that we have captured the Black Knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our 7th challenge. Let's consider 3 chess pieces for this challenge. A black fisher, a black pawn, and of course, a white knight. Place the black bishop in box A3. Next, place the black pawn in box C4. And place the white knight in box C2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means, 
knife can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically super now in this case we can capture the black bisher since it is in the knife range that is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically so let's move the knife from c2 to a3 to capture the bishop very good next we can capture the black pawn in the very next step as it is on the two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically so let's move the knight from a3 to c4 to capture the black pawn correct now that we have captured the black pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished Let's get started with our eighth challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, a black queen, and a white knight. Place the black rook in box D2. Next, place the black queen in box B3. And place the white knight in box A1. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already, the knight can move in an L shape. That means knight can move two squares in any direction. vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically very good now i have one question can we move the white knight from a1 to b4 to capture the rook No because as you know the knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically So in this case we can capture the black queen correct Since it is in the range of our white knight, that is one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically. So let's move the knight from a1 to b3 to capture the black queen. Very good. Next, we can capture the black rook in the very next step as it is on two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically so let's move the knight from b3 to d2 to capture the black rook super now that we have captured the black rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our ninth challenge let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge 
a black rook, a black pawn, and a white knight. Place the black rook in box B2. Next, place the black pawn in box D3. And place the white knight in box B4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means, knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction, horizontally followed by one square vertically. Super! Now, in this case, we can capture the black pawn. Correct. Since it is in the knight's range, that is, one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally. So, let's move the knight from B4 to D3 to capture the black pawn. Very good. Next, we can capture the black rook in the very next step as it is on one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally. So, let's move the knight from D3 to B2 to capture the black rook. Super! Now that we have captured the black rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our 10th challenge. Let's consider 3 chess pieces for this challenge. A black bishop, a black knight, and a white knight. Place the black knight in box B2. Next, place the black bishop in box D1. And place the white knight in box C3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means, knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically. Super! Now, I have one question. Can we move the knight from C3 to B2 to capture the black knight? No, because as you know, the knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically. Very good. Now, in this case, we can capture the black bishop. Correct. Since it is in the range of our white knight. That is, two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. Correct. So, let's move the knight from C3 to D1 to capture the black bishop. Great. Next, 
we can capture the black knight in the very next step as it is on two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically very good so let's move the white knight from d1 to b2 to capture the black knight super now that we have captured the black knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our 11th challenge let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge a black rook a black queen a black bishop and of course a white knight now place the black rook in box d1 place the black queen in box b2 next place the black bishop in box a4 and place the white knight in box c3 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the knight can move in an l shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically super now the white knight has two possibilities either we can move the white knight up to capture the black bishop or down to capture the black rook in this case i would like to capture the black bishop since it is in our knight's range that is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically super so let's move the white knight from c3 to a4 to capture the black bishop very good next we can capture the black queen in the very next step as it is on two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally very good so let's move the white knight from a4 to b2 to capture the black queen super next we can capture the black rook in the very next step as it is on one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally so let's move the white knight from b2 to b1 to capture the black rook correct now that we have captured the black rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our 12th challenge let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge two black pawns a black knight and of course a white knight now place the black pawn in box c3 place the black knight in box b2 next place the black pawn in box a4 and place the white knight in box d1 
Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally, or two squares in any direction. Horizontally followed by one square vertically. Super. Now the white knight has two possibilities. Either we can move the white knight to capture the black knight, or capture the black pawn. In this case, I would like to capture the. Black knight, since it is in the knight's range, that is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically. Super. So let's move the white knight from d1 to b2 to capture the black knight. Very good. Next. We can capture the black pawn in the very next step, as it is on one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically. So let's move the white knight from b2 to a4 to capture the black pawn. Great. Next, we can capture the. Black pawn in the very next step, as it is on one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally. Super. So let's move the white knight from a4 to c3 to capture the black pawn. Now that we have captured the black pawn, and there are no other chess pieces left on the board, so. This challenge is finished. Let's get started with our thirteenth challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn, a black rook, a black bishop, and a white knight. Now place the black pawn in box C3. Place the black rook in box A2. Next, place the black bishop in box B4. And place the white knight in box D3. Now We are ready. Let's start the game. As you recall from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally, or two squares in any direction, horizontally followed by one square vertically. And it is the only piece that can hop or leap over another piece. Now, in this case, I would like to capture the black bishop since it is in our knight's range. That is, two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically. Super. So. Let's move the white knight from d3 to b4 to capture the black bishop. Very good. Next, we can capture the black rook in the very next step as it is on two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. So, let's move the white knight from b4 to A two to capture the black rook. Super. Next, 
we can capture the black bone in the very next step as it is on two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically so let's move the white knight from a to to c3 to capture the black bone super now that we have captured the black bone and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our footing challenge let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge a black knight a black pawn a black queen and of course a white knight now place the black knight in box a2 place the black pawn in box c2 next place the black queen in box b4 and place the white knight in box c3 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the knight can move in an l shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically and it is the only piece that can hop or leap over another piece now in this case i would like to capture the black knight since it is in a knight's range that is one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally so let's move the white knight from c3 to a2 to capture the black knight very good next we can capture the black queen in the very next step as it is on one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically so let's move the white knight from a to to b4 to capture the black queen great next we can capture the black pawn in the very next step as it is on two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally so let's move the white knight from b4 to c2 to capture the black pawn very good now that we have captured the black pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our 15th challenge let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge a black pusher a black pawn a black queen and a white knight now place the black bishop in box d2 place the black pawn in box c4 next place the black queen in box b3 and place the white knight in box d4 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the knight can move in an l shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally
horizontally followed by one square vertically and it is the only piece that can hook or lean over another piece now in this case i would like to capture the black queen since it is in the knight's range that is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically super so let's move the white knight from d4 to b3 to capture the black queen very good next we can capture the black bishop in the very next step as it is on one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally so let's move the white knight from b3 to d2 to capture the black bishop very good next we can capture the black pawn in the very next step as it is on one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically so let's move the white knight from d2 to c4 to capture the black pawn great now that we have captured the black pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our 16th challenge let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge a black rook a black pawn a black knight and of course a white knight now place the black rook in box b3 place the black pawn in box c1 next place the black knight in box a2 and place the white knight in box a1 now we are ready let's start the game as you recall from our previous class the knight can move in an l shape that means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically and it is the only piece that can hop or leap over another piece in this case i would like to capture the black crew since it is in the knight's range that is two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally very good so let's move the white knight from a1 to b3 to capture the black rook super next i would like to capture the black pawn since it is in knight's range that is two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally so let's move the white knight from b3 to c1 to capture the black pawn super next i would like to capture the black knight since it is in knight's range that is two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically super so let's move the white knight from c1 to a2 to capture the black knight very good now that we have captured the black knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished 
Let's get started with our 17th challenge. Let's consider 5 chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, a black pawn, a black queen, a black bishop and a white knight. Now place the black rook in box B4. Place the black pawn in box A1. Next place the black bishop in box B2. Now place the black queen in box C2. And place the white knight in box A2. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class. The knight can move in an L shape. That means knight can move two squares in any direction. Vertically followed by one square horizontally. Or two squares in any direction. Horizontally followed by one square vertically. And it is the only piece that can hook or leap over another piece. In this case, I would like to capture the black rook since it is in the knight's range. That is, two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. So, let's move the white knight from A to 2. B4 to capture the black rook. Super! Next, I would like to capture the black queen. In the very next step, as it is on two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. So, let's move the white knight from B4 to C2 to capture the black queen. Correct! Now, I would like to capture the black pawn since it is in the knight's range. That is, two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically. So, let's move the white knight from C2 to A1 to capture the black pawn. Very good. Although I have captured the black pawn, we still have two more pieces on the board. Therefore, this challenge is not finished. Let's get started with our 18th challenge. Let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, two black pawns, a black knight, and of course, a white knight. Now, place the black rook in box B1. Place one black pawn in box A3. Next, place the black knight in box D3. Next, place the other black pawn in box D2. And place the white knight in box C4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means, Knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally or two squares in any direction, horizontally followed by one square vertically. And it is the only piece that can hop or leap over another piece. In this case, I would like to capture the Black pawn, since it is in the knight's range, 
that is one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally so let's move the white knife from c4 to a3 to capture the black pawn very good in this case i would like to capture the black rook in the very next step as it is on two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally so let's move the white knight from a3 to b1 to capture the black rook correct now i would like to capture the black pawn in the very next step as it is on two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically so let's move the white knight from b1 to d2 to capture the black pawn very good although i have captured the black pawn we still have two more pieces on the board therefore this challenge is not finished Let's get started with our nineteenth challenge. Let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge: a black rook, a black queen, a black pawn, a black bishop, and. A white knight. Now place the black rook in box A two. Place the black pawn in box C one. Next, place the black bishop in box B three. Next, place the black queen in box C three. And place the white knight in box D one. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the knight can move in an L shape. That means knight can move two squares in any direction vertically followed by one square horizontally, or two. Squares in any direction horizontally followed by one square vertically, and it is the only piece that can hop only over another piece. In this case, I would like to capture the black queen since it is in the knight's range. That is two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. So let's move the white knight from D1 to C3 to capture the black queen. Super. Next, I would like to capture the black rook. In the very next step, as it is on two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically. So let's move the white knight from C3 to A two to capture the black rook. Correct. Next, I would like to capture the black pawn in the very next step, as it is on one square vertically followed by two squares horizontally. So let's move the white knight from A two to C one to capture the black pawn. Good. Next, I would like to capture the black bishop in the very next step, as it is on one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically. So let's move the white knight from c1 to b3 to capture the black bishop. Very good. Now that I have captured the black bishop. And there are no other chess pieces left on the board, so this challenge is finished.
Let's get started with our 20th challenge. Let's consider six chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black rook, a black pawn, a black bishop, a black knight, and of course a white knight. Now place the black rook in box C2. Place the black bishop in box A1. Next, place the black queen in box B3. Next, place the black pawn in box C1. Next, place the black knight in box D4. And place the white knight in box D3. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, knight can move in an L shape. That means knight can move two squares in any direction, vertically followed by one square horizontally, or two squares in any direction, horizontally followed by one square vertically, and. It is the only piece that can hop or leap over another piece. In this case, I would like to capture the black pawn since it is in the knight's range. That means two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. So let's move the white knight from d3 to c1 to capture the. Black pawn, super. Next, I would like to capture the black queen in the very next step, as it is on one square horizontally followed by two squares vertically. So, let's move the white knight from c1 to b3 to capture the black queen. Correct. Next. I would like to capture the black bishop in the very next step as it is on two squares vertically followed by one square horizontally. So, let's move the white knight from b3 to a1 to capture the black bishop. Very good. After that, I would like to capture the black rook. In the very next step, as it is on two squares horizontally followed by one square vertically. So let's move the white knight from a1 to c2 to capture the black rook. Super! As you could see now, there is only one opponent piece left on the board, and it is within the knight's range. What it is? It's the black knight. Correct. So, let's move the white knight from c2 to d4 to capture the black knight. Very good. Now that we have captured the black knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. This is all about the moves of the night. You can download all these challenges for free from our website gajabooks.com. I have provided the link in the description box. We are going to discuss about the bishop.
other pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by standing on the square on which the piece is standing this is briefly about the moves of the bishop in the following videos we will do some interesting challenges to master the moves of this important chess piece let's get started with our first challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black pawn and a white bishop place the black pawn in box a4 next place the white knight in box d1 now we are ready let's start the game as you know from our previous class the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares if an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupy its square the bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on squares of a single color now in this case the bishop starts the game on a black square so it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game so let's move the bishop from d1 to a4 to capture the pawn now that i have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our second challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black rook and a white bishop place the black rook in box c1 next place the white bishop in box a3 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares if an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupy its square the bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on a squares of a single color now in this case bishop starts the game on a white square so it will only be able to step on white squares for the rest of the game so let's move the bishop from a3 to c1 to capture the rook now that i have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our third challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black knight and a white bishop place the black knight in box c1 next place the white bishop in box b2 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class 
the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares if an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupies its square the bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on squares of a single color now in this case the bishop starts the game on a white square so it will only be able to step on white squares for the rest of the game so let's move the bishop from b2 to c1 to capture the knight very good now that i have captured the knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's get started with our fourth challenge let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black rook of course a white bishop place the black rook in box b1 next place the white bishop in box d3 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares if an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupy its square the bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on squares of a single color now in this case the bishop starts the game on a black square so it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game so let's move the bishop from d3 to b1 to capture the rook very good now that i have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's begin with our fifth challenge let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge a black bishop a black knight and a white bishop place the black bishop in box c4 place the black knight in box d3 next place the white bishop in box a2 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares if an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupy its square the bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on squares of a single color now in this case the bishop starts the game on a black square so it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game so let's move the white bishop from a to to c4 to capture the black bishop very good next we can capture the black knight as it is on the bishop's range so let's move the bishop from c4 to d3 to capture the 
Flat night. Very good. Now that I have captured the night and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our sixth challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black rook and of course a white bishop. Place the black queen in box D2. Place the black rook in box C1. Next, place the white bishop in box B4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a white square. So, it will only be able to step on white squares for the rest of the game. So, Let's move the white bishop from b4 to d2 to capture the queen. Super! Next, we can capture the rook as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the bishop from d2 to c1 to capture the rook. Very good! Now that I have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our seventh challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn a black rook and of course a white bishop. Place the black pawn in box C3. Place the black rook in box A1. Next, place the white bishop in box B2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squads. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a white square. So, it will only be able to step on white squares for the rest of the game. So, Let's move the white bishop from B2 to C3 to capture the black pawn. Very good. Next, we can capture the black rook as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the white bishop from C3 to A1 to capture the black rook. Very good. 
Now that I have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our 8th challenge. Let's consider 3 chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black rook and of course a white bishop. Place the black queen in box C2. Place the black rook in box B3. Next, place the white bishop in box A4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a black square. So, it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game. So, let's move the white bishop from A4 to B3 to capture the black group. Super! Next, we can capture the queen as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the bishop from b3 to c2 to capture the black queen. Very good. Now that I have captured the black queen and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our ninth challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn, a black rook and a white bishop. Place the black pawn in box C3. Place the black rook in box B2. Next, place the white bishop in box B2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a white square. So, it will only be able to step on white squares for the rest of the game. So, let's move the white bishop from b2 to c3 to capture the Black pawn. Good. Next, we can capture the black rook. 
as it is on bishop's range so let's move the white bishop from c3 to d2 to capture the black rook very good now that i have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's begin with our 10th challenge let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge a black queen a black knight and of course a white bishop place the black knight in box c2 place the black queen in box d3 next place the white bishop in box c4 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares if an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupy its square the bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on squares of a single color Now in this case the bishop starts the game on a black square so it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game So let's move the white bishop from c4 to d3 to capture the black queen super Next we can capture the knight as it is on bishop's range so let's move the bishop from d3 to c2 to capture the knight very good now that i have captured the knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished Let's begin with our 11th challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight, a black pawn, a black bishop and a white bishop. Place the black knight in box C4. Place the black bishop in box B3. Place the black pawn in box D1. And place the white bishop in box C2. Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path it can capture and occupy its square The bishop has a unique characteristic it always stays on squares of a single color Now in this case the bishop starts the game on a black square so it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game So let's move the white bishop from c2 to d1 to 
कैप्चर द ब्लैक फोन वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट वी कैन कैप्चर द ब्लैक बिशप एज इट इज ऑन बिशप रेंज सो लेट्स मूव द वाइट बिशप फ्रॉम डी वन टू बी थ्री टू कैप्चर द ब्लैक बिशप गुड Next, we can capture the black knight as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the white bishop from b3 to c4 to capture the black knight. Very good. Now that I have captured the knight and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished let's begin with our dual challenge let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge a black rook a black queen a black pawn and of course a white bishop place the black queen in box c2 place the black rook in box b3 place the black pawn in box d1 next place the white bishop in box a4 Now we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squares. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a black square. So, it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game. So, Let's move the white bishop from a4 to b3 to capture the black rook. Very good. Next, we can capture the black queen as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the white bishop from b3 to c2 to capture the black queen very good next we can capture the black pawn as it is on bishop's range so let's move the white bishop from c2 to b1 to capture the black pawn very good now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our 13th challenge. Let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, a black knight, a black pawn a black queen and a white bishop place the black rook in box c4 place the black knight in box b1 place the black queen in box c3 Place the black pawn in box A2. 
Next, place the wine bishop in box C2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squires. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a black square. So, it will only be able to step on black squares for the rest of the game. So, let's move the white bishop from C2 to B1 to capture the black knight. Very good. Next, we can capture the black pawn as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the white bishop from b1 to a2 to capture the black pawn. Very good. Next, we can capture the black rook as it is on bishop's range. So, Let's move the white bishop from a2 to c4 to capture the black crew. Very good. Although I have captured the black rook, we still have two more pieces on the board. Therefore, this challenge is not finished. Let's begin with our 14th challenge. Let's consider 5 chess pieces for this challenge. A black bishop, a black queen, a black pawn, a black knight and of course a white bishop. Place the black queen in box C1. Place the black knight in box C3. Place the black bishop in box B2. Next, place the black pawn in box B3. And place the white bishop in box A3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the bishop can move diagonally in any direction and to any extent permitted by the squires. If an opposing piece blocks the bishop's path, it can capture and occupy its square. The bishop has a unique characteristic. It always stays on squares of a single color. Now, in this case, the bishop starts the game on a white square. So, it will only be able to step on white squares for the rest of the game. So, Let's move the white bishop from a3 to b2 to capture the black bishop. Good! Next, we can capture the black knight as it is on bishop's range. So, let's move the white bishop from b2 to c3 to capture the black knight. Very good! Although I have captured the black knight, we still have three more chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is not finished. This is all about the moves of the bishop.
today we are going to discuss about the queen the queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard the combination of rook and bishop moves has made it one of the most iconic piece in the game of chess originally the queen was referred to as a vizier minister or advisor it was a weak piece that could only move or capture one step diagonally later the game made its way from india to persia and the arab lands up through north africa and finally to southern spain During the reign of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Castile in the 15th century the queen evolved into the most powerful piece on the board Let's have a look at the moves of the queen The queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop can move forward and backward but it can never jump over any other pieces the queen like the other pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing This says briefly about the moves of the queen. We will do some interesting challenges to master the moves of this important chess piece. Let's begin with our first challenge. Let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black knight and a white queen place the black knight in box c3 next place the white queen in box b2 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop it can move forward and backward but it can never jump over any other pieces the queen like the other pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing now in this case we can capture the knight because it is on the diagonal path to the right so let's move the queen from b2 to c3 to capture the knight now that i have captured the knight and there are no other chess pieces on the board so 
This challenge is finished. Let's begin with our second challenge. Let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge. A black ball and a white queen. Place the black pawn in box B4. Next, place the white queen in box B1. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the pawn because it is on stride path towards up. So, let's move the queen from B1 to B4 to capture the Pawn. Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our third challenge. Let's consider Three chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn, a white queen and a black rook. Place the black rook in box C2. Place the black pawn in box A2. Next, place the white queen in box A4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other chess pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the rook because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, Let's move the queen from A4 to C2 to capture the rook. Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on stride path towards left. So, let's move the queen from C2 to A2 to capture the pawn. Very good. Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our fourth challenge. Let's consider three chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn, a black bishop and of course a white queen. 
place the black pawn in box d3. Place the black bishop in box b2. Next, place the white queen in box a1. Now, you're ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other chess pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop because it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from a1 to b2 to capture the bishop. Very good. Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from b2 to c3 to capture the pawn. Super! Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our fifth challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, a black bishop, a black queen and a white queen. Place the black rook in box d4. Place the black bishop in box c3. Next, place the black queen in box b2. Next, place the white queen in box d2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop because it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from d2 to c3 to capture the bishop. Next, we can capture the rook. In the very next step, as it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from c3 to d4 to capture the rook. Very good. Next, we can capture the queen in the very next step, as it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the queen from d4 to b2 to capture the queen. Super! Now that we have captured the queen and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished.
Let's get started with our sixth challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black crook, a black pawn, a black knight, and of course, a white queen. Place the black crook in box D1. Place the black pawn in box B1. Next, place the black knight in box B3. Next, place the white queen in box D4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop because it is on the strike path towards down. So, let's move the queen from d4 to d1 to capture the rook. Next, we can capture the knight in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from D1 to B3 to capture the knight. Very good. Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards down. So, Let's move the queen from b3 to b1 to capture the pawn. Super! Now that we have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our seventh challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black bishop, a black rook, a black knight, and a white queen. Place the black bishop in box C3. Place the black rook in box D4. Next, place the black knight in box B2. Next, place the white queen in box B3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other chess pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the knight because it is on the strike path towards down. So, let's move the queen from b3 to 
B2 to capture the night. Next, we can capture the bishop in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from B2 to C3 to capture the bishop. Very good. Next, we can capture the rook in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards right. So, let's move the queen from C3 to D4 to capture the rook. Super! Now that I have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's get started with our 8th challenge. Let's consider 4 chess pieces for this challenge. A black pawn A black rook A black queen And of course A white queen Place the black queen in box B1 Place the black rook in box D1 Next Place the black pawn in box A4. Next, place the white queen in box B3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen, like the other chess pieces, can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the pawn because it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from B3 to A4 to capture the pawn. Next, we can capture the rook in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, Let's move the queen from A4 to D1 to capture the rook. Very good. Next, we can capture the queen in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards left. So, let's move the queen from D1 to B1 to capture the Queen! Super! Now that I have captured the queen and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our ninth challenge. Let's consider 5 chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight A black pawn A black rook A black bishop And a white queen Place the black knight in box A3 Place the black bishop in box A1. Place 
the black crook in box D3. Next, place the black pawn in box B4. Next, place the white queen in box C3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen like the other chess pieces can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the queen from c3 to a1 to capture the bishop. Next, we can capture the knight in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards up. So, let's move the queen from a1 to a3 to capture the knight. Very good. Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards right. So, let's move the queen from a3 to b4 to capture the pawn. Super! Next, can we capture the rook now? No, because it's not in the range of our queen. So, this challenge is not finished. Let's begin with our 10th challenge. Let's consider 5 chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight A black pawn a black rook, a black queen, and of course, a white queen. Place the black knight in box D3. Place the black queen in box B3. Place the black rook in box D1. Next, place the black pawn in box A2. Next, place the white queen in box C4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the strike line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen, like the other chess pieces, can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the knight because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the queen from c4 to d3 to capture the knight. Next, we can capture the rook in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards down. So, 
Let's move the queen from d3 to d1 to capture the rook. Very good. Next, we can capture the queen in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from d1 to b3 to capture the queen. Super! Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the queen from b3 to a2 to capture the pawn. Wow, super! Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our 11th challenge. Let's consider 6 chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black knight, a black pawn, a black rook, a black bishop and a white queen. Place the black bishop in box C4. Place the black knight in box C2. Place the black queen in box B2. Place the black rook in box B1. Next, place the black pawn in box B4. Next, place the white queen in box D1. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen, like the other chess pieces, can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the knight because it is on a diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the queen from d1 to c2 to capture the knight. Next, we can capture the queen in the very next step as it is on the straight path towards left. So, let's move the queen from C2 to B2 to capture the queen. Very good. Next, we can capture the rook. In the very next step, as it is on the straight path towards down. So, let's move the queen from B2 to B1 to capture the rook. Super! Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step, as it is on the straight path towards up. So, let's move the queen from b1 to b4 to capture the pawn. Wow, super! Next, we can capture the bishop in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards right. So, 
Let's move the queen from B4 to C4 to capture the bishop. Great! Now that I have captured the bishop and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our 12th challenge. Let's consider 6 chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black knight, a black pawn, a black rook, a black bishop and of course a white queen. Place the black queen in box C1. Place the black knight in box A4. Place the black pawn in box B3. Place the black rook in box B2. Next, place the black bishop in box A1. Next, place the white queen in box C4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the queen combines the straight line moves of the rook with the diagonal moves of the bishop. It can move forward and backward, but it can never jump over any other pieces. The queen, like the other chess pieces, can only capture an opponent's piece by landing on the square on which the piece is standing. Now, in this case, we can capture the queen because it is on the stride path towards down. So, let's move the queen from C4 to C1 to capture the queen. Next, we can capture the rook in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards left. So, Let's move the queen from C1 to B2 to capture the rook. Very good. Next, we can capture the bishop in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the queen from B2 to A1 to capture the Bishop! Super! Next, we can capture the Knight in the very next step as it is on the stride path towards up. So, let's move the Queen from A1 to A4 to capture the Knight! Wow! Super! Next, we can capture the pawn in the very next step as it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the queen from A4 to B3 to capture the pawn. Great! Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. This is all about the moves of the queen. Today, we are going to discuss about the king. 
द किंग इन चतुरंगा वाइडली रिकॉर्डेड एज द एर्लीएस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ चेस वाज नोन एज अ राजा व्हिच इज द संस्कृत वर्ड फॉर किंग द पर्शियंस रेफर टू इट एज शाह दे वर्ड फॉर किंग When the Arabs took over chess from the Persians they kept the name When shatranj the muslim form of chess spread to Europe the king's name was latinized as rex and it was commonly referred to by the native word for king in other european languages For example it was a roy in french a kyoni in german and a re in spanish The king is easy to recognize it is the tallest piece in your army and mostly has a cross on the top of its crown The whole game of chess revolves around the king. The king is the most important piece in the game of chess. However, it is also the weakest one. In chess, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king this is briefly about the moves of the king In the following videos we will do some interesting challenges to master the moves of this important chess piece In this class we will go through two challenges for king Let's begin with our first challenge Let's consider two chess pieces for this challenge a black pawn and a white king place the black pawn in box d3 next place the white king in box d2 now We are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. Any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king now in this case we can capture the pawn because it is on the stride path towards up so let's move the king from d2 to d3 to capture the pawn now that i have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's 
let's begin with our second challenge. Let's consider three chair spaces for this challenge. A black knight, a black pawn, and a white king. Place the black knight in box B2. Place the black pawn in box C2. Next, place the white king in box C3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. Any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king. Now, in this case, we can capture the knight or pawn. First, I would like to capture the knight because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the king from c3 to b2 to capture the knight. Next, I would like to capture the pawn because it is on the strike path towards right. So, let's move the king from b2 to c2 to capture the pawn. Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces on the board. So, this challenge is finished. In this class, we will go through two challenges for king. Let's begin with our third challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black bishop, a black rook, a black pawn and a white king. Place the black bishop in box B4. Place the black rook in box C3. Place the black pawn in box D2. Next, place the white king in box A3. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. Any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop because it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the king from a3 to b4 to capture the bishop. Next, I would like to capture the rook because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, Let's move the king from b4 to c3 to capture the rook. Next, I would like to capture the pawn because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the king from c3 to d2 to capture the pawn. 
Now that I have captured the pawn and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So this challenge is finished. Let's begin with our fourth challenge. Let's consider four chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black pawn, a black bishop and of course a white king. Place the black queen in box C3. Place the black pawn in box C2. Place the black bishop in box C1. Next, place the white king in box C4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. Any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king. Now in this case we can capture the Queen because it is on the straight path towards down. So let's move the king from C4 to C3 to capture the queen. Very good. Next, I would like to capture the pawn because it is on the straight path towards down. So let's move the king from C3 to C2 to capture the pawn. Super! Next, I would like to capture the bishop because it is on the stride path towards down. So, let's move the king from C2 to C1 to capture the bishop. Very good! Now that I have captured the bishop and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So this challenge is finished. In this class, we will go through two challenges for king. Let's begin with our Fifth challenge. Let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge. A black rook, a black knight, a black pawn, a black bishop and a white king. Place the black rook in box A3. Place the black knight in box B2. Place the black pawn in box C1. Place the black bishop in box C4. Next, place the white king in box C2. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. Any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king. Now, in this case, 
we can capture the fawn because it is on the striped path towards down. So, let's move the king from C2 to C1 to capture the pawn. Next, I would like to capture the knight because it is on the diagonal path towards up. So, let's move the king from C1 to B2 to capture the Night, very good. Next, I would like to capture the root because it is on the diagonal path towards left. So, let's move the king from B2 to A3 to capture the root. Very good. Next, can we capture the bishop now? No, because it is not in the range of our king. So, this challenge is not finished. Let's begin with our sixth challenge. Let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge. A black queen, a black knight, a black pawn, a black bishop, and a white king. Place the black queen in box D1. Place the black knight in box A4. Place the black pawn in box C2. Place the black bishop in box D3. Next, place the white king in box C4. Now, we are ready. Let's start the game. As you know already from our previous class, the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward, backward, to the sides or diagonally. Any of the opponent's pieces standing in any squad surrounding the king can be captured by the king. Now, in this case, we can capture the bishop because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the king from C4 to D3 to capture the bishop. Very good. Next, I would like to capture the pawn because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the king from D3 to C2. To capture the pawn. Super. Next, I would like to capture the queen. Because it is on the diagonal path towards down. So, let's move the king from C2 to D1. To capture the queen. Super. Next, can we capture the knight now? No, because it's not in the range of our king. So, this challenge is not finished. In this class, we will go through two challenges for king. Let's begin with our seventh challenge. Let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge. A black knight, a black rook, 
a black pawn a black bishop and a white king place the black rook in box b3 place the black knight in box a1 place the black pawn in box a2 place the black bishop in box b1 match place the white king in box b2 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward backward to the sides or diagonally any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king now in this case we can capture the bishop because it is on the straight path towards down so let's move the king from b2 to b1 to capture the bishop super next i would like to capture the knight because it is on the straight path towards left so let's move the king from b1 to a1 to capture the knight next i would like to capture the pawn because it is on the straight path towards up so let's move the king from a1 to a2 to capture the pawn next i would like to capture the rook because it is on the diagonal path towards right so let's move the king from a2 to b3 to capture the rook now that i have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board so this challenge is finished let's begin with our eighth challenge let's consider five chess pieces for this challenge a black rook a black queen a black pawn a black bishop and of course a white king place the black rook in box a2 place the black queen in box b2 place the black pawn in box c3 place the black bishop in box b4 next place the white king in box a4 now we are ready let's start the game as you know already from our previous class the king is a slow piece that can only move one step forward backward to the sides or diagonally any of the opponent's pieces standing in any square surrounding the king can be captured by the king now in this case we can capture the bishop because it is on the straight path towards right so let's move the king from a4 to b4 to capture the bishop very good next i would like to capture the pawn because it is on the diagonal path towards down so let's move the king from b4 to 
C3 to capture the pawn. Next, I would like to capture the queen because it is on the diagonal path towards town. So, let's move the king from C3 to B2 to capture the queen. Super! Next, I would like to capture the rook because it is on the striped path towards left. So, let's move the king from B2 to A2 to capture the rook. Very good. Now that I have captured the rook and there are no other chess pieces left on the board. So, this challenge is finished. This is all about the moves of all chess pieces. Thank you for your participation and I hope to see you again in the advanced course. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. Please do like and subscribe. See you in the next video.